In the many affirmative action cases that have come before the Supreme Court, typically the uh, complainants are, are, are focusing on the idea that minority students get some sort of a leg up uh, based upon you know, the, the fact that they, they may not be uh, as qualified. Uh, a quite different case now is emerging in, in the Supreme Court and it deals with, with students who in fact are doing better than the general admissions policy of the University of Texan, Texas at Austin. Jess Braven uh, is bring, coming to us from his home in uh, Washington. Tell us a little bit about what's unique about this particular case that's uh, now being heard today by the, by the, the Supreme Court. Well, in 2003, the Supreme Court held that diversity uh, in the classroom was a compelling government interest and that in some cases uh, universities could consider race as one of many other factors in evaluating individual applicants. Uh, the case before the Supreme Court today is not about increasing the raw numbers of uh, minority students at the University of Texas, but rather what the university calls diversity within diversity. The university accepts about the top 10 percent of the class rank of each high school in Texas those schools vary tremendously in quality, and also many of them are generally one-race schools, thanks to years of uh, de facto or, or legal segregation in Texas. What the university says it needs to do is, for a small number of applicants, consider, for example, uh, the uh, 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 child of, um, say, a, a black doctor in the Dallas suburbs who might be just below the top echelon of class rank in a very competitive suburban high school, but nevertheless uh, could bring something uh, uh, unique to the class at UT. So that's the narrow question. But I think it's important to know that the court could go much further than looking at this narrow question and decide whether uh, a state university can consider race uh, at all in admissions. They could go, they could make this narrow, they could make this very broad. Now, uh, eyes are focused, as they often are, on Justice Kennedy, the potential swing vote in this, right? That's right. Uh, in 2003, the court split five to four in upholding uh, an affirmative action program. And in fact, the, the, the other major case in college affirmative action, which was in 1978, also split five to four mm -hmm. to uh, uphold uh, consideration of race. Uh, the key difference uh, today is that the author of that five to four decision, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, has retired, and her uh, successor, Justice Samuel Alito, uh, is much more skeptical of racial preferences and affirmative action. And it, it's, it seems quite unlikely that he is going to uh, uh, take the same position she did. So that changes the, the focus to Justice Kennedy, because Justice Kennedy, while he has voted against uh, specific affirmative action programs in the past, he does say that diversity on campus is a compelling government interest. It is important. Mm. Uh, the question is how uh, narrow are the means that uh, the university uses uh, to get there. He wants, uh, as he said in prior opinions, every applicant uh, evaluated individually, not as a representative of his or her race. Now, Jess, when can we expect a decision on this case? Well, not today. The arguments are at 11 a.m. They'll end shortly after 12. Uh, we don't expect a decision for months, perhaps not until uh, next June when school gets out. Right. Okay. Well, everyone will be looking closely at it, obviously. Thanks very much for your time, Jess.